So what should my power curve look like as an enduro rider? I thought this would be a good opportunity to know where my, where to focus my attention for this upcoming season. Should I focus more on shorter power intervals? And then finally a question, is there a perfect in quotes power curve at all? And does it differ based on your discipline? Uh, so <clears throat> we should probably talk about the purpose of a power curve. I actually posted something on my Instagram stories and you can follow us. If you go on YouTube right now, you can see all of our handles on here and you can follow us all on Instagram. And I recommend doing that. Uh, good follows, send us messages. We'll chat. Uh, but I shared something on there just yesterday about how I use PR charts. And especially it's, it's different when you use trainer road because you have seasons and season match and all the cool features that go around that. I was looking at my power curve and it was showing that I was not as fast this year as last year. And I was sad. And then I clicked the season match thing. So then instead of comparing 11 weeks of training in the year before to five weeks of training this year, cause that's how far I am through it. It actually compared five weeks of progress through this year and five weeks of progress last year. And guess what? I'm way ahead. So, uh, cool stuff there, but using power curves can be tricky for a couple of reasons. Cause I think that it can make you fall into this trap of thinking that it defines you as a rider and what you can and should do. It can also make you, you can obsess over the actual shape of the graph and you can like be really upset by little pe peaks and valleys and try to smooth it out. You can do all those things. And that's not really what it's for. Um, it's really for tracking PRs over time and, and being able to see how you compare from one time frame to another. And that's what it's really, uh, I think that's at least where I get the most. Like I mentioned, using season match is a good way to be able to compare that. You can get as detailed as you want. Also with trainer roads PRs, because you can measure it by second and then you can click in and see every ride where you got those PRs and all that stuff. Um, so I guess this is kind of like focusing on how we use PRs here and with seasons, you can build anything you want. Like Pete even had like pre base seasons that he built up. Um, yeah. So you can isolate that time. <clears throat> yeah. I, I just think it matters so much. Just like you said, uh, it's one snapshot versus another snapshot and that's so hard to compare. But if you're looking at, um, like a period in time and you're kind of adhering to the same structured training for that same period of time, it's really easy to see how you're progressing based on previous times. And so mm -hmm. my, usually my no November, December always is pretty similar as far as training. Um, and so I just make those my own seasons and call them pre 2019, pre 2018. And I've made them in the past. And so you can actually see that come December 15th or whatever, if, if you start November 11th, instead of November 1st, you can still, uh, kind of cut that out with, with season match, but you can just see how you're progressing and, and kind of your trajectory and where you're headed, which I think is much more important than the actual numbers you're putting out. Um, because yeah. it's all about the work you put in and that's kind of like uh the power curve doesn't define what you what you are it's what you've done so yeah because uh, yours pete kind of like would say that like if you looked at your power curve relative to another person's power curve just proving the point that you just said that it doesn't define the athlete you are it would say that you're like a really good sprinter however you do not target sprints ever in races yeah i'm, I'm like a pure sprinter uh, i should be a pure sprinter uh according to my power curve uh, but you don't win sprints when I you're in your races, sprints. you don't win sprints. Nope. Yeah. So it's like a good example of the fact that like, you know, relatively speaking to somebody else, yes, your power curve may look different, but that doesn't mean that you're like that athlete and you're kind of stuck in that box. We mention this all the time. Like, you know, you're an amateur athlete, like you're not paid. You can, you can be whatever you want and you can train however you want. It's really cool. Uh, whereas mm -hmm. a pro athlete like Caleb Ewan, isn't going to say that I'm going to change to be like a super domestique and sit on the front at 450 Watts and tow everybody around. He just doesn't get that because he's a pro and he's very specialized in what he does. And even for you, Ivy, um, it says that you shouldn't be a good sprinter, kind of the opposite of Pete, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, with the right critical eye on all of my numbers, like I shouldn't be good at anything. Uh, <laughs> like you really can't let those numbers like, be a deter like determine what kind of writer you think you are. Like my numbers say that I shouldn't be a good sprinter whatsoever. And yet like mm -hmm. I've won a handful of bunch sprints. So you too, right, Alex, you've won a lot of bunch sprints. You're just secret undercover <laughs> sprinter too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just ask Justin Williams when he came out to the lunch route at Specialized, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yours Uphill actually sprints. 
Yeah. For 20 minutes are my special <laughs> for, t- <laughs> for 20 minutes. I was just going to say, yours says that you're like a TT specialist. If you were to look at it that way to try to define yourself, right? But you've never, I don't know if you've ever done like a road TT. I've never ridden a TT bike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Such a shows like for all of us, like your, your power curve can say, if you look at your power curve, you can fall into the temptation of trying to let it define the athlete that you are, but in most, it's not that at all. It's really like a reflection of, of like really of what you're doing, right? Alex, like you had, you had some thoughts on this about like what it actually means to you versus trying to put you into a box. Yeah. I mean, I think Pete said it. it's just a collection of like your highlights really, you know, it's, it's what you've done for a certain amount of times. And if you scroll across it, it's like, you'll see the date at which you did it change. Right. So it's like your 23 second PR was on a different day than your 24 second PR. So it's like, it's a collection of what you can do in training, but also if you went out and tried to mimic that power curve, <laughs> you would last probably like 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah. So it's, but then there's also more to it, right? Like it's a super powerful tool and it kind of helps you understand where your strengths and weaknesses lie, but it's like in racing, there's so much more to it. There's repeatability, mm-hmm. there's in mountain biking, there's technical skill, there's, you know, in road racing, there's surfing the pack. Like I think you mentioned on a podcast before, the best way to make a climb hard is to be inefficient leading up to it. So it's like, Mm -hmm. it's the same thing, right? It's like, it'd be great if you could put out 400 watts for 20 minutes on that climb. But if you're fighting for position leading up to it, it's like, that's not going to happen. So I don't think there's any perfect power curve. And I mean, even if you took like all the best mountain bikers in the world and you looked at their power curves, they're probably not the same. They have different strengths, you know, one rider can really punch out of the gate. One rider has a really high threshold and just can't perform, you know, a huge amount above it, but they all get to the same place and can race on the same course. And I like what Pete said when he's trying to target winning races, he knows what he's good at. So it's like, you try to make the race come down to what you're good at. So use Mm -hmm. your power curve to your advantage. I don't think that means don't improve your power curve, but if you're at a race and this is your power curve and you know, you have a great one minute power, try to make that race. So it's your one minute power against theirs. Mm, That's like a really good way to use it for like self-analysis and identification of opportunity. Right. Uh, We talk about like, there's like product market fit where like, it doesn't matter how good your product is. If it doesn't find its right market, it's never going to be successful. It's never going to get legs and never going to go anywhere. Just like a rider, if you don't have a good race scenario for that rider, they're likely not going to be successful. So a lot of the time it's, it's like, it's like rider race fit or rider course fit, depending on it and road racing. It really, since it's so dependent upon the, the pack and how the pack is racing it, it's really like rider race fit. Um, and really keen observation, Alex of saying like, you know, trying to make the race fit your power curve and Pete is a master at doing that by the way. So, um, but then when we talk about mountain biking a lot of the time or a time trial or Ironman course or gravel race, anything like that, it comes down to much more like rider race, or I should say rider course fit. And we actually, uh, Alex, you raced mountain bike national championships two years ago, the most recent one. And (laughs) as did I, and that course was unique because a lot of the time mountain biking is about repeatability. It's about your ability to recover, even though you've just gone way over your limits and you do that repeatedly over and over and over. But this race was up at 9,000 feet in elevation. So really high. And then on top of that, it was basically like a 10 to 13 minute climb, depending on what sort of, you know, what level you were at, but a 10 to 13 minute climb. And then after that really long descent, then just kind of like a traverse that you worked your way back to the bottom of that climb. So it was really like the course if you really just trained your 10 to 13 minute power, that was where you needed to be. So that's where a power curve can be really helpful because if you know that that course is going to stress you in a very specific way, then you can look at that and track that over time and say like, Oh yeah, it's getting better. And that's why like, even I'm going to give this away a little Easter egg for anybody that wants to do mountain bike national championships. But that's why cross country marathon is actually, I would say a better plan compared to cross country Olympic for that course, because cross country marathon actually works your six to 12 minute power somewhere around there more often than, than it would with normal cross country Olympics. So, so you can use a power curve for that to try to figure out like where the fit is, um, courses 
matter much more than the discipline. And it doesn't really make sense for us to push ourselves into a discipline just because our power curve showing what we have done, not what we're capable of shows that we should be a certain type of rider. Um, so, so that's like a, I, I think a, a key point in that for sure. Um, what other points do we want to make on this one? We've jumped around in relation to our notes, but, um, uh, Pete, do you have anything that you want to add to this? <clears throat> Yeah. And what it is, is uh, just like Alex mentioned, it's up to you to turn the race or the course into something that suits you the best. And like we, we, the way you mentioned, the, ra the way I race as many races as I possibly can is make them so they're suited to me. Um, and that, that's if, if there's a really hard, punchy climb, I'm going to make it really hard leading up to this, the hard, punchy climb, because hopefully that kind of mitigates some of the pain that I'm going to feel. Um, but if it's a steady crosswindy, um, you know, 2% downhill, I'm actually going to race it the same way that there's a punchy climb coming ahead because that's when I can also do the most damage. Um, but it, it, it helps to really look at a course and the people in the race and how they're going to race it and kind of swirl all those together and think about what's the, what's the way that you can save the most energy and still utilize your strength. Um, and so it's, it's a constant battle that you have to be thinking about every race, every, the way they're racing it, every course. Um, and you, you should kind of come in with a plan and a couple plans based on, uh, like your A, B and C plan, because if you, if you just kind of shoot from the hip, it works every once in a while, but you, you're not learning and, and kind of capitalizing on this, the strengths that you have, um, which, uh, makes bike riding really hard. And I think Ivy was talking about how some people don't race bikes after a while after they lose, even though their power profile says they should win. Um, and it's because they're not using it correctly. Uh, just because you have the power profile doesn't mean you're going to win stuff um, right off the bat. So it takes a lot more work than just putting out the 400 watts for the 20 minutes, unfortunately. Yeah. And Ivy, you actually have some notes in here about like, so you can focus on a power curve excessively and kind of forget about your training plan, but you have some, some notes in here about the enduro, like enduro specific riding and training and why that would be important. Yeah. And I think to expand upon like what Pete just said for chase specifically, like, um, each day is going to be different. And, you know, Pete mentioned some things about like how you'll have to like key on each course and each like race scenario differently. And with enduro, like, every like the terrain like so many things are going to change per event that you do that like focusing so much on that power curve really isn't going to um i mean it's just much more important to look at what look at it as a tool just like any other training metric and approach each each race day differently and that's really where like enduro training specifically will help with that you know, preparation of repeatability and comprehensive fitness so that Chase has the best tools on the day. Yeah. It really with Enduro, it just comes down to that. It's repeatability. Like how many of those efforts can you do over and over again? Um, also, yeah. Arm pump. I, Pete just raised up his hands. I don't know if that's what he was getting at, but that's another yeah, thing too. Was, yeah. That's for sure. That matters so much more than my power curve in all enduro races is my forearms getting really, really tired. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Pete and I had, I think like a third, was it a 13 minute stage, um, that we had from the top of North star to the bottom and we finished it and it was like, it was physically hard to move. Like afterward uh, when you minutes. when you un when you take your fingers off your handlebars because you can't straighten your fingers anymore yeah you can't yeah. you have to pull them off and yeah you have to pull to them off them. <laughs> oh my gosh yeah so man and are distance. fun though <laughs> <laughs> so much fun yeah yeah um and also pete and i going either pedaling up or riding the chairlift up depending on what happened and both of us like i i mean not talking to each other and absolutely sharing the same exact wavelength of like what the heck are we doing out here like it was, it was i could feel it in pete's head and you could feel it in mine the whole time so uh, not enduro racers if you like this video make sure you give us a thumbs up if you didn't like this video, you can give it a thumbs down, but let us know what you would have done differently in the comments below. If you want to see more of these videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, check out trainerroad.com. Do it. If you think I have better hair than Jonathan, give it a thumbs up. If not, leave a comment. My hair is better than his.